drink more and more and more but I, I was just feeling worse and worse and worse and worse and I thought if I don't do something about this I'm, I'm definitely gonna die you know you go when you're a druggie you, you gotta expect that's where you'll end up one day innit but I'm broken inside I know and you know what I mean I am a lost well I call myself a lost cause I'll probably end up in prison my problem is training go to prison is fine I have a fear about coping without drugs. I'm one of them one in ten people <laughs> that has a certain gene. I, I believe some different stuff to what they're saying there. You have a certain gene that gives you an addictive personality. I started drinking at the age of six, I did. And to block out a lot of stuff that were happening to me in my childhood. And to block out sexual abuse. He turned around to me and said, it's too late. You're yeah. old. Wake up, gotta score. Wake up, gotta score. Something had to change. Tried to kill myself in January. There's nothing good in it at all. Think of the mind. Curtain shut, phone off, door locked. And what, what was it that was the final straw? Were you what? No, dark side of the attic. Got a knife out, someone went for him with the knife. When you knock my teeth out, I left it bad. I'd have to I'd have drink a quarter of a bottle of vodka just so I could think straight. Have you ever heard of abstinence? No. What is, what's that? I was 18, I think it was. I tried to kill myself the first time. Oh, mate, isn't it about coping with the drugs? Getting rid of them is quite easy, mm. isn't it? You know what I mean? But it's the shit that comes afterwards, because then you've got a void. I've been going to chemist for 20 years. I was 26, I tried to kill myself and again, because I was that depressed and stuck in that thing and I didn't know any way out. And you'll find you'll never get clean. Obviously I don't want to speak about stuff like that in there because it's going to affect the other people who are recovering. It's going to affect them. What I think. Mean? I think I'm fucked, mate. Alcoholism has too long been a taboo subject. Just as tuberculosis used to be 40 years ago. We're trying to teach people the truth. But alcoholism is a disease. And that because it is a disease, it should have no stigma attached to it. Alcoholics should be dealt with like other sick persons, in hospitals and clinics, not in jail. Alcoholism can be solved by community action. The National Committee stands ready to help your community plan such action. Through hypnosis and self-hypnosis, we will attempt to pull back the outer layers of your consciousness to get to the hidden part inside. Um, and within a couple of weeks, I'd started to drink again, which then led on to other things as well. So I was taking crack and heroin as well. Didn't do that for very long, though. Thank God. Um, but yeah, since I started drinking again, it's just got worse and worse and worse. Um, to the point now that I'm in a home the drink that you know it, it sort of like it leaves you in a very uh, dark and lonely place. That's what I would have told me none at one point. Like, you know, it's like I love the beer and then it's like when I can drink no more then I tend to go on having drugs and you know what I mean, my stomach can barely take any more like I tried getting the other day first time injected it. As you can see the first time I have injected it there. Uh, Ten pound bag. Yeah. See it. What made you do that? Then? Just fucking feeling a bit low, like about my next girlfriend and whatnot. And this lad said this will take all the pain away. Very deeply inside, the power.
power for change, for improvement, for the happier, more successful you lies waiting there for you to uncover. All right, let us begin. I'm here at Action Chester. Uh, Ad Action does help me big time. I've got mental health issues, my drug problem at the moment. I'm on Subitex. I come out of Birchwood about a year and a half ago. Now I was clean for the first time for 20 years. I was only clean for three weeks. I come here the first day I got out and said, "Is what can I do now?" And there was nothing. So. I ended up going back on to heroin, back mad for it for a year and a half and I've come back to add action and it's changed, it's totally changed, it, there is aftercare and help. Does it concern you that you've started to, that you've had your first yeah, the, injection? Yeah, anything? I'm very worried about uh, the thing that I'm most scared of is turning into one, which oof. I started taking drugs when I was about 14. And I got into crap when I was about just turned 15. Shoplifting every day. I'm a PPO. I'm on a DRR probation. I look back and I've wasted 20 years of my life. The best part of my life I have. And I'm devastated. Acid, Wiz, Crack, Ease, MCAT, Ketamine, that Rhino Ketamine. What else is there? You know what I mean? I injected, first time I injected. I normally used to smoke crack. I injected it and injected heroin. I had a speedball. So I ended up going to the shop and nicking a bottle of vodka after. What's driving your, your addiction? Just the fact this takes my mind off life. I struggle dealing with day to day things of life, do you know what I mean? And the only way to get that out of my head is have a pipe or have some MCAT, do you know what I mean? You know, it gets that intense that you do end up, your mind starts playing tricks with you and you think, oh, if I have a two, I'll be okay, or if I go to the pub, I'll. That's why a lot of uh, junkies, they get clean and then they develop a, an alcohol habit. What are your concerns in regard to your mental health? Tried to commit suicide a few times, panic attacks. I hear voices down. I lock myself in the, in the house, got nothing to do. I'm depressed, nowhere to go. What, what happens when you don't take drugs, when you try and not take drugs? What, what's that like? Horrible. Don't know how to deal with things, you know what I mean? At all. I sit in my room and watch telly. Don't want to talk to no one. Because I don't know how to hold a conversation with normal people, do you know what I mean? I was having to go to the pub before I met anybody, do you know what I mean? One pint and then I'd, I'd be able to meet somebody. If I didn't do that, I couldn't even go down to the corner, corner shop. And this is what they're helping me with. Here, taking me shopping, showing me things. Normal things of life, you know what I mean? You need the aftercare. You've got to have aftercare. The caring and they listen to you and talk to you. It's a good place to come. I'm scared of it really, tell you the truth. Being a normal person. That's all you used to do, wake up in the morning, crack. Till time went to sleep, crack, crack. I've got the confidence in our, in, in our action that I, I think I'll do it, yeah. Well, champ, is it champ from Acorn? I've just signed up to do that. I've come here to do the groups. I do, I'm engaging with a lot more things which is taking my mind off it. But all I want to be is happy. I don't even know what happiness is. I don't, because I haven't had it for 20 years. I think, that's, I think that's what I'm scared of, life in general. Day to day things of life. The only, the only thing that's good is coming here. I tried to kill myself in January, nearly done it as well. I'm very lucky to be here. Yeah. Um, it's just drinking because the things that's happened to me, it's blocked it out. Well, thinking it's blocking it out and makes me worse. This is the women's only support group. Uh, we run here every Wednesday and it's obviously for women coming through recovery. And some women can only talk in front of women, so and it's just those affected with addiction, mm -hmm. um, drugs and alcohol. I can just say being in recovery is brilliant and we were talking last week about laughing and I have more laughs, I feel happier now sober than I ever did and I thought the drink was what I needed but I don't need drink, I really don't need drink. I started drinking at the age of six I did and obviously as I got older my 
my addiction got worse and became more and more dependent on it physically. Um, for me, due to what was happening at home in my own life, that's all there was for me was drink. With, with drink, all my problems seemed far, far away and removed. Um, I liked the feeling that drink and alcohol gave me, it gave me warm, warm feeling, it gave me confidence to do things that without it I could have never have done. I initially came into contact with that action through Aqua House. Um, that sort of started my my contact with alcohol services and to address my problem because I knew my drinking wasn't normal and it was certainly in me to places I didn't want to be. You know, for 20 years solid, you know, it was drink. I woke up loads of times in hospital, apparently OD'd, didn't know I was doing it. Locked up loads of times, not that I was being violent or a nuisance to anybody, it was for my own safety because apparently I'd be walking down the road in my pyjamas or whatever, I didn't know I was doing it. Total blackout. I've been in some mental homes as well. But now, so it's like me mental health issues now, you know, I'm good, you know. I still take antidepressants, but they're actually working now. Yeah. They are actually working, yeah. <laughs> So it's it's really you know it's it's good now you know you've got to sort of like keep focused. It's only early days. It's only you know been ten months. I did Warrington twelve step program um, for three months but because you're in so much denial. They knock that denial out of you. A lot of tears, a lot of shouting, you know, um, tantrums galore, everything, you know. But my life now it is totally different. Um, I feel things, I taste things, you know, and I'm just so grateful to be alive and living now. I enjoy life. I love getting up in the morning. I love it. She will love again. She will love again. In the, in the energy behind the covering, Cheshire. I think there's been a massive difference. There's far more involvement of service users, of people in recovery in the treatment system, that there's far more partnership working with people who are in recovery. So massive difference in the energy behind it all. Okay, great rules. Clean and sober, never offend anyone. Confidentiality and anonymity of the persons in this group are first and foremost. Please turn off all mobile phones or on silent. Caring constructive feedback, thinking of others is our code. Respect other people when they are sharing. These rules are for the personal safety of everyone in the group. A lot of people have been inspired by other people's stories and I think that people in recovery can challenge service users in a way that professionals probably can't, that you can be more direct, you can use language that we wouldn't normally use. And I think that in itself can be effective with people who perhaps need challenging more for them to make changes. But I had this little thing inside my head that told me that I couldn't, I, I, I just, I couldn't just put stuff down, be drinking my drugs down. I couldn't see life in any shape or form without them. And yet I didn't really want them anymore. It was such a chore to, to not, not just go and get it. To, to take in it wasn't a pleasure anymore. I'll be six months clean for the first time in 33 years. Of well done, any. Nice. Yeah. It was the first group I've ever come to which was around addiction and, and I just got so much identity and it wasn't about the drugs or the drink, it was the identity and the people that was in here. Changing lanes for me has been massive. Um, so yeah, and I, I, basically t you, you've done me really well today, to be honest, because you know I've had a lot of fears building up to sort of coming to Monday, and um, you've settled a lot of them for me today. Yeah, my name's uh, Derry Jones. I work for for Turning Point, uh, at the Open Access Day Service in Northwich in Cheshire. We opened this service in in autumn of 2004, so. Um, Initially, we, we, what we wanted to do here was invite partner agencies in to, to provide uh, a range of services and interventions for people with substance misuse issues. But I also provide acupuncture here, full body acupuncture for people, for a range of emotional and physical pain. Um, 
that's that's to do with their their drug addiction but also to do with life as well so hopefully what we do is support people through their substance issue and then also into their into their recovery and and we're here for them if they need to come in and have treatment we have a 30 bedded hostel next door to this service so there's a good housing link in with the service also we provide things like yoga there's a breakfast club in the morning um, and these are just a range of, of other lifestyle things that people can add to their recovery so they can you know feel better about the journey that they're on uh, we've been married uh, just over 18 months uh, known him for three years um, he was very honest from the start that um, about his addictions, about his past. 30 years on gear and you, it's like you're in a tunnel. You, your emotions aren't high, they ain't low. Um, every, your senses are all dull but you don't know it. You think you're okay because you've built up those drugs so slowly to a higher amount that um, you don't realise what it's done. That's why when you come off when the emotions hit you, you're all in tears. Every time you talk, you want to cry because they're all hitting you and all the chemicals are coming back into your body that should be there. We, we've got, we're deficient of something. What do you think the deficiency is? Probably confidence in ourselves. Um, and, and if you've been on a number of years, um, you will have a, a, a mechanism of dealing with that. My mechanism was being quite brazen and outgoing, when in actual fact, I was frightened inside. He has a lot of autistic tendencies of, of OCD. Um, everything has to be in its place, and he has set routines and, and thinking. And once you understood that about him, um, everything else fell into place, you know, why he needed an addiction. Um, like he said previously, if it hadn't have been drugs, it would have been alcohol, it would have been something else. People that are addicts, they'll either be alcoholic or drug addicts, or they'll have something else major in their lives that stops that. Um, I think we're self-destructive people, um, and it's a terrible illness. It is an illness. I, I don't really know what the answer is. When he decided that he wanted to come off the methadone, it was knowing what what I could do and have in place. And yeah, it was horrible. It really was. Unreal withdrawals. I'd never have I experienced something like that. Yeah, there was times when he was ready to throttle me because he wanted to get to his methadone. I mean, the doctor and Debbie gave me their own phone numbers, they were that worried because my heart went up by 30 beats. <laughs> and <they laughs> veins exploded in my hands. I had to be strong for him. I'm there going, you'll be all right, you, you, know, the, you know, close your eyes, have a sleep. Not knowing whether he would actually wake up and having to hold myself together and sort of deal with it very lightly and casually and, you know, and not fall apart myself. The doctor didn't sleep that night because they thought I was going to die. <laughs> but, uh, but so did I. So, um. And it wasn't till about a fortnight afterwards when he was, you know, straight, um, that it all came flooding out um, with a friend of mine that, you know, and I was just in floods of tears because I'd held it in that long. I mean, she stayed with me and didn't let me go out the room. And I'd got, I'd got five gallon of methadone stashed that the, you do need the strength and the support. I, no way could I have done this by myself. Knowing that I've got Debbie and the doctors and everybody that I can come to and say, that was horrendous. Wasn't it? <laughs> Five gallon. <laughs> the difference in his personality, his emotions, all those things that were hidden uh, and subdued, it's like being woken up. Uh, and it really is, I mean, he, he was lovely before when I married him, you know, but he's even nicer now. And it's just smashing, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a case of stay on the methadone for a life script, which I'd got, um, or uh, give it up. And I only gave it up because to move forward in, in God's organisation. It's the only reason I stopped it. Um, Otherwise, I'd have stayed on until the day I died. I know religion isn't a, a favourable subject, but um, 
it truly is the way it's worked for me. There's no turning back for me. Um, I know it and I feel it. That's the difference, I feel it. It's having the right people in place. Uh, Debbie just happened to suit me and give me the leeway and understand me. Um, all agencies haven't got that. So you've had a spiritual experience? Yeah. I knew there was help out there. I knew, I knew it was all for years. I knew I had a problem. But I was that mixed up in my head and my emotions for years that it was like a battle. And then I come to the decision that I want to bit out my life and be somebody again. I know all about the illness because I've been a part of it. 32 years of addiction. I don't find it struggling. Yeah. You know what I mean? What I'm are you struggling with? Uh, my emotions and my feelings at the moment because I never had them. Such as in rehab you think it might be scary and that but when you get there and you meet such sociable people that are straight I can't remember the last time I've had fun every day and started enjoying life. Me and Chester turning points. It's on uh, Hull Road, isn't it? Yeah, it's on Hull Road. Hull, 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 Hull Road. Recovery now means to me uh, abstinence totally from drugs. Get a job, hopefully get a place. And they do help you with all that, you know. Hiya, I'm Claire, I'm one of the drugs workers at Catherine House in Crewe, Central Cheshire Drug Service. Um, my role within the drug service here is as a recovery treatment exit worker. Obviously we're all aiming towards recovery with our clients but I work specifically with people coming off their scripts and looking to go to detox and rehab. And you know, to still help people who say like they don't want to go to detox or they don't want to go to rehab you know because the stuff you can do in the community yeah as well. they can still they can reduce in the community on the prescription we'll support them with that we can look at community detox on their prescription that's always an option we've got the fellowships as well haven't you? yeah uh, of aa and na as well that's in crew now yeah um you know i i, I attend that myself and that's going pretty well so yeah uh, you know seeing a few different faces come in as well yeah you know, with different problems as well i don't know how you're finding that down here um, we're seeing more MCAT, more stimulant, obviously cocaine is getting sort of rife over here. So, and, yeah. and the younger people coming in with the MCAT use as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Ad Action across the road from us here, you know, they're helping out. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm a therapist with Ad Action, a project worker. Um, it runs groups on a Monday and a Wednesday. And um, sometimes we do some sort of therapy, look at where we're up to and get some tools. Without this meeting, um, I wouldn't be here now. I've had alcohol problems for 20 odd years, um, from the age of 16 upwards. I've got two teenage kids that need looking after. I can't help them if I can't support myself. You know, what normal person would do that, choose drinking drugs over the children from home? That's the that's power massive. of it, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. the power of the addiction. You know, it, it, it strips you, strips you bare and it breaks your mind, your body and your soul. It'll take everything from you. We run a group called Pathway Programme. We've got people that have done detox and rehab. They come back into the group, and obviously to, to motivate people thinking of doing detox and rehab, so they'll sort of try and get rid of the fear, fears and the worries. I say my past is my best asset today. Yeah. You know, and if I can help someone, you know, um, someone's relationship or someone's job or someone get a better quality of life or a better relationship with the children or anything like that, then that's me. You know, I'm, I'm happy to do that. The recovery fund is one of the best things that we've got at the minute. We can just say, here's some money, hop on a bus, go to Northwich, go to Max, see the groups that are happening. And I know the recovery coaches as well there, they're coming over to, um, they're coming over to Crew now as well, aren't they, yeah. to help people steer towards yeah. recovery as well yeah. so it's a lot more visible um, doing the recovery coaching today I'm trying to help people that are in sort of the first stages of recovery or in recovery and just passing a positive message on four months ago I was, I was, I was ready for dead man all I had was a list of offences yeah. now in the last 12 months I've just got a list of gratitude for everything that I've done I went in treatment for six and a half months since I've come out, I've took a counselling course, past that, I start another counselling course in September. I work with the Barnabas Centre here in Macclesfield. Um, I work for the CWP, which is uh, Cheshire Mother Partnership Volunteers. Um, I've done dancing, I've performed at the Lowry.
for me it's a big it's a massive part of my own personal growth you know because I know that when I've done this I'll take a step further in my, in my own program it's all good and the main reason I'm doing it is it's another channel to you know to spread that message that you know we do and we can we, we can recover you know you just gotta be willing to make that change step out of addictive step into recovery that's what it's all about spreading that message We started remodelling of the service around two years ago, saw a, a demand and a, an area where we feel as though we could assist in the recovering communities and moving people out of rehabs from out of area back into the, the Cheshire region. But now I think Mill Lane has been integral to the ever growing recovering community in this area. We've got some good examples where people have moved through, moved on to independent living, um, maintain their abstinence and we've also assisted with the mentoring, linking in with the, the other services and agencies very well. I've made sure that we, we are on the right tracks in terms of recovering communities in Cheshire East. We've realised, you know, there's a lot of vulnerable people that come into the group, so not many of them want to talk straight away or don't understand why they need to talk and talk about the feelings. When I came into Mill Lane, I was isolating a lot. Um, I was very anxious about going out, very panicky and my mind was like a washing machine. Um, came into here and um, they were really understanding um, gave me the help and support that I needed. And then I've gone into rehab for four months and I've come out and I've only been out two weeks but I just feel loads better in myself. I feel more positive. It's a fear based illness and I, I do believe that, that it is and it's overcoming that fear and facing life on life's terms. Excuse me. Hello, John. I'm, I'm just at the mill. I'm just being interviewed as we speak. So, I'm gonna be... No, 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 no. Um, I'm, I'm gonna come down and meet you. I'll come down in a minute. I was a PPO officer. I've been asked to do some work with uh, the PPOs, um, helping offenders who are coming out of prison start talking about you know what's going on when they get out of jail and why do they keep relapsing you know what is it we can do to sort of fulfill their needs really well these two guys know me many years ago um, committing offences daily the navigate prolific offender team and we work with uh, people We've got a big history of, uh, of crime and uh, uh, drug or alcohol abuse. Um, and this facility will certainly help them massively once this facility is up and running. It really will. A couple of the guys have actually been in our course. It's good to see how well they've done since they've been released back into the community because while they're in custody they say the right things to get out on license we don't know whether they actually mean what they say um, but today's proof gives us a totally different opinion of that we've set up lots of um, prison visits that have been beneficial one in particular um, Nick came to see this lad who was thinking about rehab and that's all been agreed and sorted out and he'll be in rehab in the next couple of weeks but uh, absolutely nothing negative to say about uh, the mentors at all. It's been a really good partnership and that's exactly what it needed in, in this area. We can now go back to the prison and say to the clients that we're working with, actually you're saying there's no hope, this is on offer when you do return back home to Macclesfield. Uh, a lot of it's attraction, word of mouth stuff. People are seeing people just like themselves getting well and they want a bit. Macclesfield Recovery Factory our, our largest project in Cheshire. I'm, I'm very, very enthusiastic about this. I think this is the missing link to 
recovery for a lot of people. There's volunteers upstairs and they're coming back each day and they're getting a buzz out of it and I'm hearing things in town from friends of them saying that they're enjoying it and obviously they are because they're coming back each day. I was sat in the hostel, some lad said there's an acorn treatment centre from Stockport's got a mill down here, an old mill they're doing it up near volunteers and they've just been volunteering ever since. So. And we're setting up what at the minute is basically is a shell that's been ripped apart and be rebuilt to function as a unit for recovery in, in Macclesfield. I think it's going to be massive for Macclesfield. Really. 20 months, 21 months on coming back to Macclesfield. Uh, just completely different to, to see the streets and see how Macclesfield is now through sober eyes. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's, uh, Lovely, it's a, it's a shock to take it all in. Uh, it's like a new experience, really. Right, I got lost in a bit of emotion at the moment. In what way? What, what way is it emotionally? I don't know, just everyone. Everyone seeing me on the streets. Um, I thought they'd all be judging me, but they, I can see that they're pleased to see me back. And there's a lot more people out there that care than I thought there would do. You know. For them, you talked about you know virtual crawling across Macclesfield, trying to find help somewhere. There's a factor in this at the time, man, by people who've been there and now living life. I just wonder what effect that might have on the positive. Yeah, going back to where, I, yeah. I literally crawled across, yeah, parts of it. I was, I was, I was, I didn't have the strength to get across to the hospital. Uh, and you, you do see people like that out there on the streets today that, you know, aren't far behind that. Uh, yeah, and we're here to, you know, hopefully help a few people on the, on the journey into recovery and, and beyond, yeah. It's all going to be good, massive. Oh, my mum came to see me. We went to Wales, just had a, a holiday and just it was amazing to see her, you know, like I've got her back in my life and, you know, it's amazing to see. She always had this like serious worried look in her face, you know, that's gone, you know, that's gone now. She, she's, you know, she's at, I think, I think I made her happy, yeah. And I think, I mean, obviously I've made her happy, but, you know, she's just, she's proud of me and I'm proud of myself, really, you know, for, for what I've done, you know. Did you say anything in particular to you about yourself and... Well, yeah, I, I made an amends to her and she gave me a lecture, but that's okay. <laughs> but it was cool. Uh, we had a little drizzle together, you know. Some, some hugs and kisses and yeah it was awesome we laughed a lot which is something completely new I'm obviously trying to find myself again now you know um, which I lost Carol many many years ago and um, I'm beginning to like Carol now you know you're over it and you get on with your life gives you a feeling a brightness in your eyes. I say I'm sad to stay sober. I'm happier today than I've ever been. I'm starting college in October, which is great. I'm coming here to a group, which I absolutely love. And he'll just look at me if he sees me smile and he says, you've got life in your eyes again, Carol. I finally got my life back and it is joyful. I should be getting contact with my children pretty soon. Now I'm back. I used to have a friend who used to say, uh, he was in recovery and he used to say, oh, my life's amazing, amazing, amazing. And I used to think, Get real, man. Mm. Yeah. But do you know what? He's right. You want to change your life. Come into recovery. You know, there is there is hope there. And people can do it, no matter where you've come from, no matter what you've done. How your life was, you can just turn it around, if you're willing to. Recovery. I wouldn't change it for the world. I've been able to overcome so many obstacles in my life. Um, I've been clean now for over 18 months. 
the reason I've been clean for 18 months is because I haven't felt suicidal for 18 months. I've got my kids back in my life. I didn't lose my kids because of my addiction. I lost my kids because of my mental health. But now I'm stable on my mental health because I'm working with people to maintain stability in my life. And I've got my kids back in my life, which is absolutely amazing. I've been up to see them twice. Um, I've got a granddaughter. I went to her christening. Um, and I'm going up to see them again in two weeks' time, which will be great. Um, I've just celebrated my 40th birthday and never did I ever think for one second that I'd still be alive at 40. I actually thought that I'd probably be dead and buried long before I got to that point. Um, so to be, be able to start my life over again, because my kids are all grown up, you know, I've, I've got a whole new life ahead of me. Um, a good 20, 30, maybe even 40 years ahead of me where I can have a good, happy, contentment life, which is what I am now. I'm very content with my life. I'm very self-assured, much more confident within myself, and I have self-respect. Um, I'm getting a dry mouth because I'm emotional, which is a good thing because I'm feeling it and I'm allowing myself to feel in it. People have said to me how proud they are of, of me for me to get where I am and I guess you know 12 months ago I wouldn't have said okay I accept that whereas today I do accept that you know even I'm proud of myself to get to where I am today um, and I just want the message to go out to people that you know you, you can recover and you can stay recovered so life today is magic uh, that, that's how I describe it. It's magic. Magic to have my kids back in my life. Magic to have a granddaughter. Magic to be where I am today. Um, people trusting in me to help other people um, has been a big boost to my confidence and my self-esteem. And every day I wake up and I think, yes, I want to get out of bed today. I'm not pulling back the duvet. I'm thinking, I never want to see life again. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's me, really. The message that I want to give is, if you want it, grab it, and don't let go of it. That's enough for me, you do me, Eddie. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we cut it there? Yeah.